When God gives you an assignment, the best thing for you to do is take up that assignment. The last thing that you should do is what Jonah did. You should not run from God. You should not run away from his assignment. Our Sunday School lesson this week is titled Jonah Runs and is Found Out, being taught from the selected scripture there in the first chapter of Jonah, starting at the seventh verse and going through the 17th verse. I'm going to, of course, reference some other scripture in our Sunday School lesson this week. I'm definitely going to reference the start of this chapter. So I would actually advise all of you to make sure that you have your Bible open to the first chapter of Jonah. Just don't wait for me to go over the selected scripture. Also, I would ask all of you today, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you are subscribed to the Newfound Faith channel. Make sure that you like this lesson. Make sure that you share this lesson with somebody somewhere. Our lesson for today, we are going to take a look at a couple of things. First off, we have a calling and an election that we must make sure. That is something that is shared with us in scripture. Our election, all of us, we have been chosen by the Lord. God, he chose the world when he gave the world his only begotten son. All of us, we have that election. All of us who, again, we choose the Lord for ourselves. all of us who choose the Lord by faith, we have an assignment that has been given to us, what we call the Great Commission. Jesus has a task for us in which we should go out into the world, sharing the gospel, ministering the good news with all people. And so again, we have to answer, are we answering that call? Are we carrying out the assignment that Jesus gave to us? That's something that we're gonna be taking a look at here in our Sunday School lesson this week. Something else that we are also going to be taking a look at in our lesson this week and then in future lessons to finish out this quarter is essentially going to be a comparison between Jonah and Daniel. We have, we have studied about Daniel all quarter long and now we get to the final month of lessons to where we take a look at Jonah and we're going to see a comparison between the two. We'll get into that, but let us go ahead, let us start off our lesson there by taking a look at the seventh verse where we'll see that our lesson, it opens up with, with lots being cast to see who was the cause of trouble. So we open up our lesson, we see that there is trouble. We see that we are opening a lesson here in the midst of trouble. What is going on, right? Our, our Sunday school lessons always have the habit of dropping us into the midst of something. That's why I often go back and reference scripture that wasn't in the selected scripture. Now we'll see there again, as we take a look at that seven verse, that the lots, when they were cast, they, they fell on Jonah. And those with him had asked him there in a verse, for what cause is this trouble upon us? We still don't know what the trouble is, but they asked Jonah, for what cause is this trouble upon us? They asked him his occupation, we'll see there. They asked him where he was from. They asked him what people he was of as well. So we need to try to figure out here, what's the trouble? What is it that's going on? Some of us may know the story of Jonah, but some of us out there may not know the story of Jonah. So we need to know what is going on. This requires us to go back to the very first verse in this chapter, just taking a look at the opening of this chapter. If we go back to the first verse there, we'll see that the book of Jonah, it opens up by telling us that the word of the Lord came to Jonah, who we are told was the son of Amittai, and then we're told there in the second verse what the word was that came to Jonah from the Lord. We'll see there in that second verse that the word that came from God to Jonah was, Arise, go to Nineveh and cry out against it for their wickedness, the wickedness of Nineveh, the people who were living in Nineveh, we're told there, has come up before me. So Jonah was given an assignment, right? This is an assignment that, that Jonah was given to by the Lord. His assignment, we'll see there, is him going to Nineveh and preaching, ministering in, in Nineveh. Now, that doesn't seem like a, such a bad thing, right? Jonah is supposed to go to a place. He's supposed to minister in this place. He's supposed to preach to the people in this place. That doesn't seem like a big deal for us, but to Jonah, this was a no-go. 
this was a no go for him. Why was that? Why was this a no go for, for Jonah? Well, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. And if you have listened to me preach or teach before about the divided kingdoms of Israel, then you know that the Assyrians were the ones who conquered the Northern Kingdom. They conquered Israel, where the Babylonians, they conquered the Southern Kingdom. The Babylonians, they conquered Judah. And so if we turn back over to the 14th chapter of 2 Kings, and we take a look at the 25th verse there, we're told in that scripture that Jonah, who again was the son of Amittai, was from Gath Hefer, we're told there, okay? Now, again, that may not mean much to, to you. You may not even know where that is located at, but Gath, I want you to understand, it was located in the Northern Kingdom. So with its location being in the Northern Kingdom, with the Assyrians having conquered the Northern Kingdom, with Jonah being from the Northern Kingdom, that being where he was born, that being his dwelling place, then there's some, black, some bad blood that was there from, from Jonah towards the Assyrians. There's a chance that, that Jonah suffered at the hands of the Assyrians. And if he did not personally suffer at the hands of the Assyrians, it's very likely that he knew people who suffered at the hands of the Assyrians, who likely died at the hands of the Assyrians. It's quite possible that Jonah lost family, that Jonah lost friends, acquaintances, right, to the Assyrians. So this assignment from God to Jonah to go and preach to the people in Nineveh, to go and preach to the Assyrians, this was a no-go for him, again, on, on simply the level that, hey, those people, they killed our people, they killed my people. There's a good chance here that, that Jonah despised the Assyrians. And now he's being given an assignment from the Lord to go and minister to his enemies, to those that he would have no love for, to those who he would despise. Do you think you would be able to do that? Do you think that you could go and preach to those who may hate you and who you may not like yourself? Do you think that you could love your enemies? Doesn't that sound like, doesn't that sound like an assignment or, or commandment that, that Jesus has, has given to us? If we turn over to the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel and we take a look at the 44th verse there, the scripture lays it out very plain for very plain for us there. Look at that. Have we not been told there in that scripture to love our enemies? Have we not been told there in that scripture to bless those who curse us, to do good to those who hate us? Have we not been told there in the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 44th verse there? Have we been have we not been told to to pray for those that spitefully use and, and persecute us. Jesus, he certainly taught us that we should do those things, that we should love our enemies, that we should even pray. The most special weapon that we have as a child of God, he said that we should pray for those who spitefully use us, those who, who attack us, those who who persecute us, those who want to bring harm our way, move maliciously and evil towards us. Jesus said that we are supposed to love them. So for the majority of this season, if we think about it, here's where we can compare Jonah and Daniel and even ourselves as well. Daniel, he was living in exile by the people that came to the southern kingdom, the Babylonians, conquered the southern kingdom, brought Daniel and people like him back from the southern kingdom, then tried to assimilate them into their culture. Did, did Daniel, did he say, nope, I'm not going to, I'm not going to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's vision, even though he was given that gift from the Lord? We would say that Daniel, he was moving by faith, right? We would say that Daniel, he, he was certainly helping those who had moved against him and, and his people. Whereas here with Jonah, just take a look there at that third verse. We'll see there in the third verse that Jonah, he tried to, to flee. 
from, from God. He tried to, to flee and he did. We're told there in that scripture that he was fleeing to Tarshish from God and from his presence. Do you think that that was the right decision for, for Jonah to make there? He has gotten, I want you to understand, he has gotten in his own way. He has blocked himself from a blessing and, and he's actually blocked the people in, on, uh, in Nineveh from, from receiving a blessing as well. I want you to understand, he has chosen to be selfish here. And I want you to understand here that he has not made the right choice. So when we take a look at the fourth verse there, as he was on board the boat to go to Tarshish, the scripture, the verse there in the fourth verse, again, this is outside of the selected scripture of our lesson. The scripture tells us that God sent out a great wind and there was a mighty storm, we're told, there on the sea. We're told there in that verse that the storm nearly broke up the ship and the men that were on board the ship with Jonah, we'll see there that they fear for their lives. So this is the trouble. All right, we, we now understand what was going on there in that seven verse. This is the trouble. Jonah was given an assignment from the Lord, which he said, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. This is my choice. I'm not going to do it because I don't like those folks in Nineveh. I don't like the Assyrians. They came and they killed my people. They hurt me. I'm not going to go and minister to them. They are my enemies. I can't stand them. That's what was on Jonah's mind. And so he disregarded God's assignment and he said, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go in the complete opposite direction of Nineveh. I'm going to go to Tarshish, running from God, running from God's assignment. And when he got on the boat, when he boarded the boat, the boat began to go to Tarshish. When it got out to sea, we're told that God sent a storm towards the boat. And the storm, it was a severe storm. It nearly broke up the boat, right? So Jonah, he thought that he could actually run from the presence of God. Do you think that you can run from the presence of God? There are many pastors and preachers. I, I'm pretty sure you've probably heard this story before from pastors and preachers. They, they often say uh, when they receive their calling that they try to run. My dad said that I remember when I received my calling, I thought about running, but, but as soon as I began to think about running, my dad passed away and I couldn't run. So, it's the thought of running from God, the thought of running from God's presence, it's, it's honestly futile to do, right? Because again, God, he is omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, right? God is everywhere at all times. He is all knowing, he is all powerful. Do you really think that you can hide from God? Do you really think that you can run from God. Jonah thought that he could. Okay. But there's a storm. There was a storm brewing. There was a storm knocking that boat, tossing that boat, nearly breaking up that boat. And we'll see there that Jonah, he couldn't run from it. And so when we get back into the select scripture of our lesson, when we take a look at the ninth verse there, we'll see that Jonah, he acknowledged that he was, that he was a Hebrew. He even said there in that ninth verse that he feared the Lord. But again, he has a, a funny way of showing it. If he feared the Lord, this, how do you run from him? You, you can't say that you are God fearing and then disobey the Lord because that's what Jonah did. He disobeyed God. You can't say that you're God fearing and then you purposely with intention disobey God. But he said, hey, I'm a Hebrew. He said, I fear the Lord. We'll see there in the 10th verse that the men, they grew angry at Jonah. They realized that Jonah was the reason that, that the storm was, was hitting them and that they were having all of those troubles. I think what's very interesting about what's, what's shown to us there in that 10th verse is that uh, in the verses, again, outside of the select scripture of our lesson, the men, they were trying to, to pray to their guys and they were praying to their guys when the storm was tossing the boat, nearly about breaking up the boat. And again, while they were doing that to no avail, Jonah, he had been sleeping. But when we get to this 10th verse and Jonah says, hey, I'm the reason for the problem, essentially saying God is upset with me. These men, 
they were praying to idols. They were idol worshipers. They, they, these were Gentiles. They, they had no connection to, to the God of Israel. And so when they hear Jonah say this, in their mind, they're going, okay, why did you upset your God? That's what they're thinking in their mind. Why did you upset your God? Why have you put us in, in this trouble? It was what was on, on their mind there. And so we'll see there in the 11 verse that they wondered what they should do with Jonah because Jonah was the reason for the trouble. And Jonah, he tells them there to throw him overboard, throw him out of the boat, throw him into the sea is what Jonah had said. Because again, Jonah, he had realized, he knew that the storm was because of him. And he knew if he was thrown from the boat, then, you know, the storm would come because that was God, you know, getting after Jonah, all right? And so the men, we'll see there in the 13th verse, they didn't want to throw Jonah overboard. And, and we'll see there in that scripture that uh, they tried to row against the storm. So now, even though they recognized that God was, was angry at Jonah, and even though they were upset with Jonah, they didn't want to, they, didn't, they were essentially trying to do the noble thing, right? They don't want to throw a man to his death. And so now they are, are trying to, to fight against the storm without realizing it, that they were fighting against God. Do you really think that you can fight against God and, and win? I remember a sermon that my dad preached. He said that, that our arms are too short to box, to box with God. And that's what those men, they were trying to do there. And so we'll see that finally the men, they gave up trying to row against the storm. They finally gave up trying to row against God there in the 14th verse. And we'll see here, and at the faith from these Gentiles, from these men, to where they cry out to the Lord and, and they pray to God. They pray not to perish to the storm because of Jonah. Then we'll see that they pray not to be charged with his, with his blood. So these men, what a turn here, because like I said, these men being Gentiles, they had already prayed to their guys just minutes or moments ago, they were praying to their God. And now all of a sudden we see them praying to God. So even though Jonah had ran from his assignment, we see that there are Gentiles who, who were becoming believers. This again was not because of his work. This was because of the Lord's work. And so we see that after praying there, the men, they took Jonah and they threw him overboard. And the 15th verse tells us there, immediately the, the storm it began to cease. And, and we'll see there that the men, they further began to, to move in fear of the Lord. And we'll see that they even made offerings and they made vows to God, making offerings out of faith, making a vow of faith. These men, they began to, to know the Lord. And so we'll see there in the 17th verse, the last verse of our selected scripture for, for this week that Jonah, he was left for the great fish. There are a lot of people that like to say a whale and things like that. I just say the great fish, okay? They, he, Jonah was left for the great fish there, which we're again told there in that verse, the Lord had prepared the great fish for Jonah. And we see there that the great fish swallowed Jonah up. He ended in the belly of the fish, of course, for three, three days and three nights. So. What do we take away from this lesson? You know, again, we can't run from God, right? We, we can't run from God, we can't run from his presence, and we should not run from his assignment, okay? Don't do that, don't. When God has, a, again, an assignment for you, when he has a calling for you, answer the call. Do not fight against God, don't roll against God. You are fighting a losing battle. And that's something that actually concerns me today because we have, again, been given an assignment by Christ to where we are supposed to go out into the world and where we who are of sincere faith should be ministering and sharing the gospel. We should be doing it not out of religion. We should be doing it out of sincerity. That's something that I just preached about in my recent sermon. Again, go and watch that sermon if you missed that sermon. We must move out of the genuineness of our heart. We must move out of sincerity. We must move out of love. And again, when we do that, God, he will be, be glorified and he will, he will respect us. We will find favor in his eyes, but that is a work that will uplift those that are around us. We have a world today that is filled with so much bitterness and it is filled with so much hatred because we have people who say that they are Christians 
who move out of bitterness and who move out of hate. They, they, they are supposed to be a child of God, right? But the only thing that they're doing is disobeying God's assignment to, to move out of love. And, and, and moving out of love, like I, like I preached last week, it, it uplifts. It does not tear down. It does not bring down. It helps and it supports. And that's, again, a message that is a message that we need today. That is a message that must be shared today. We cannot be like Jonah and run from our assignment. The only thing that does is bring about trouble. And there's a lot of trouble in the world today. Why do you think that is? Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. I, again, hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will share this lesson with somebody somewhere. I hope that you will like this video, this lesson as well. And again, if you aren't already subscribed, I certainly hope that you will do that as well. Again, I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. Hey there, thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't be afraid to leave a question. Don't be afraid to leave a comment as well. And again, if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following the New Found Faith channel. Make sure you hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any of our wonderful videos that we have here on our YouTube page.